So as an astrophysicist, one of the questions I get asked all the time is if the universe is expanding, where is the centre? But the universe doesn't have a centre. And it's quite difficult to wrap your head around that fact, especially when you try and picture the universe starting in a big bang, ever since which space has been expanding to give us the universe that we see today. And the problem comes with trying to picture it in the first place, right? The human brain can't picture something like the big bang, but when it does, it pictures it as an explosion. But an explosion is sort of the exact opposite of what the Big Bang was. It's actually very poorly named because the Big Bang was neither big nor a bang. So in a typical explosion, material and energy will radiate outwards from that very central point where the explosion occurred in space. And that's the key thing here. And a typical explosion is an explosion in space at a specific location, whereas the Big Bang was more of an explosion of space. Space itself was created in the Big Bang. The entire universe was. So pinpointing location in space when space didn't exist yet is not something we can do. The Big Bang happened in the entire universe at the same time. At the beginning, the universe was a lot smaller and has expanded outwards since then. So the Big Bang happened everywhere. So point at any place in space, here, the Big Bang happened here, here, the Big Bang happened here. That point next to you, right there, yeah, just above your ear, yeah, the Big Bang happened right there too. Another way that we can tell that the Big Bang wasn't a typical explosion is from the distribution of all of the matter and stuff in the universe. You know, if you think of a typical explosion, all of the lightest things will get thrown the furthest because you need less energy to, to throw them further. The further you go away from an explosion, literally the more space you have to spread that material out. So from this sort of distribution of all the lightest things to the heaviest things closer in, you can actually reconstruct really quite well the trajectories that all of those particles took in that explosion and essentially reconstruct where exactly the explosion occurred. But in the universe, we find that it looks pretty much the same in all directions and at all distances, the same densities, the same energies, the same average number of galaxies in a given volume. The universe just doesn't have those same telltale signatures of an explosion. All right, so we now know not to picture the Big Bang as your typical explosion. But the other thing that's difficult for the brain to picture is the expansion of space. We know that space is expanding because when we look out into the universe, we see that the majority of galaxies on average are all moving away from us. And the greater the distance of a galaxy, the faster it's moving away from us as well. Now that can give us a little bit of a false sense of importance here on Earth because from our perspective, it seems like all of the galaxies are moving away from us. But really that's what it's all down to, it's just down to perspective. If we're here in our galaxy and in one direction we see a galaxy racing away from us at 10,000 kilometers a second, and in the exact opposite direction we see another galaxy racing away from us at 10,000 kilometers a second, looks to us like everything's racing away from us. But if we could hop over to another one of those galaxies, from that galaxy's perspective, our galaxy is racing away at 10,000 kilometers a second and the other one is racing away at 20,000 kilometers a second. Again, looking to them as if they are in the center and everything is racing away from them. Now the most famous analogy to help people picture this has been used by the likes of Arthur Eddington, Fred Hoyle, and many a high school science teacher over the years, and that is the case of blowing up a balloon. If I draw some galaxies on the surface of a balloon and I blow it up, then this kind of reflects what's happening in space. First of all, we're not creating more balloon to blow it up. We're just working with the same amount of balloon we had at the beginning. This is the same thing that happens in the universe. The Big Bang created the entire universe, whether it was tiny or whether it expanded to be huge. We haven't created anything new in the process of expanding it. Secondly, all the points move away from each other. There's no central point on the surface of the balloon from which all of those galaxies are moving away from. So that might have helped you picture what's going on here. 
Now, the thing is, it is an analogy. It's not a perfect description of what's going on in the universe. So there's a lot of things wrong with this analogy too that sometimes I think can hinder more than help. So let's go through those as well. Firstly, the obvious one is that the surface of the balloon is our analogy here, but the surface is 2D and not 3D like the real universe. You could describe anywhere you wanted to go on the balloon with a simple sort of north, south, east, west, and you wouldn't need up and down. That third dimension does not mean anything physical in the universe. So yes, even though there is a center to the 3D balloon and the fact that, you know, it's in that middle of the air pocket in the middle of the balloon, that doesn't mean anything physical in our analogy with the universe. There's nothing to do with higher dimensions or anything like that that's driving the expansion. It's just that you have to picture the 2D surface of the balloon working in the 3D dimensions of the universe. Second, we stretch our galaxies when we blow up the balloon. Now, this doesn't happen in the universe. Galaxies are bound together by the really strong gravity of the supermassive black hole and the hundreds of billions of stars and all the gas and dust that make them up. And that force of gravity is stronger than the expansion of space outwards. And so the space between stars in galaxies doesn't stretch because they're bound together by gravity. Thirdly, our 2D surface of the balloon that is our analogy with expanding space is finite. It wraps around on itself. That could be true for the universe, but again, it might not be. It could be that it, it does have a finite size or it could be that the universe is infinite. We also don't know the shape of the universe. And so we don't know if it does wrap around on itself like the 2D balloon does. Again, this is a weird one for the brain to wrap its head around because we often picture the universe as a sphere because here on Earth, when we look out in any direction into space, we can see as far as the places where light has had enough time to reach us since the beginning of the universe about 14 billion years ago. So that is indeed a sphere, but that might not be the entire universe. That's just the observable universe. And that's a really important distinction because yes, the observable universe is indeed a sphere with you right at the very center, you know, you looking up at the night sky and observing the universe. You can only see as far as the light that's had enough time to travel to you. But beyond that is the entire universe, which we don't know the shape of, but we know that it doesn't have a center. And we have so many observations to support that as well. Picking my favorite of these, you know, the observations from the largest galaxy survey that we've ever done, the Sloan Digital Sky Survey, which recorded the distribution, the position, and the motion of over a million galaxies in the northern sky. Here's a visualization actually showing the data they took, placing the images that they took with the telescope at the positions and the distances they recorded. And when we study the motions of these galaxies as a whole, their bulk motion, there's no sign of a central point around which all of them are moving. Now, admittedly, that is only what we can see. Perhaps we can't see enough of the universe to really appreciate what's actually going on. Kind of like, you know, when you have to zoom out of something before you can see the pattern in it, Perhaps, you know, our models and our theories are only actually accurate for the observable universe and not the entire universe. And therein lies the problem because we'll never know. We'll never be able to know because we can never see further than the observable universe. And so we kind of just have to work with what we've got and what we actually can see. And what we've got is telling us that the universe doesn't have a center. Before we get to the bloopers, I just want to thank this week's video sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is a website that helps you to learn really complex ideas with interactive courses that break down problems into easy to understand chunks and get you start thinking like a scientist. Plus, they're fun too. Now, if you want to understand more of the models and the maths behind the stuff we've talked about in this video, including the Big Bang and the expansion of space, then check out their cosmology course. See, here's the equation describing the expansion of space reflected by that balloon analogy we had in this video. So it's high level stuff, but this is why Brilliant is so good because it breaks down these problems and gets you to learn by doing so that you actually are able to learn and remember this stuff. 
So if that sounds like something that you'd be up for and you want to support me and my channel, then head to brilliant.org forward slash Dr. Becky, that's D-R-B-E-C-K-Y, and sign up completely for free. Plus the first 200 people to go to that link will also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Champion. So thanks very much, brilliant. And now, roll those bloopers. When you try and picture the universe starting in a big bang, ever since which, ever since which? Here in what looks to be the center of the universe. However, as we've just heard, motorbike, damn it. It's 30,000 light years from galactic central point. We go around every 200 million years. Our galaxy is only one of millions of billions in this amazing and expanding universe.